presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. It's been a tough weekend for the Angels, especially on the offensive side against the Tampa Bay Rays. Jet, here we are on this Sunday afternoon. Perfect day for baseball. Trying to salvage the finale before the off day tomorrow. It's game three today against the Rays. We welcome you inside to a broadcast booth and back to Angels baseball here on Fox Sports West along with Mark Duvisa. I'm Victor Rojas, and uh, now that the Angels have lost three consecutive series, uh, you have to start looking at the offense and the struggles that this lineup continues to have. Even though Trout's back in the lineup, it's nice to see him contributing, but it's not just a one-man band. It can't be a one-man band for the next two-plus months. Yeah, Victor, when you think about what they've done in their last 14 games, is four and ten during those stretches. You're averaging just a little bit over two runs per game. The batting average barely over 200, but the thing that really jumps out, and we've seen it so far in the series, the batting average with runners in scoring position, 107 batting average they've had some opportunities especially early in games to get that big hit to get some runs but they haven't been able to do it and the reason why a lot of times you'll see that with hitters Victor they're tense at the plate they just got to get be relaxed again and use the middle of the field you try to pull the baseball either if you're a right-handed batter or left-handed batter you play into the hands of a pitcher and you're gonna have a tough one today with Chris Archer especially with his slider you have to think big part of the field better percentage of getting a job done with a runner in scoring position you mentioned Chris Archer's on the mound for the Tampa Bay Rays the Angels recall Parker Bridwell he'll get the start this afternoon in order to make room for him they designated for assignment second baseman Danny Espinosa we're just about ready for baseball here at the big A sit back and relax gonna bring you the lineups to the first pitch when we return
Irma, muggy afternoon, although there's some clouds up above. It was nice uh, earlier. The, the temperature seemed to cool off, but all of a sudden the sun has popped out here at the Big A and see if the Angels can uh, kind of get that offense to pop out a little bit here against Chris Archer and the Rays. Try to pick up a victory before the off day tomorrow. And then you've got the Washington Nationals. Doesn't get any easier for the Angels. That's for, for sure. You've got the Nats in for two, the Red Sox in for three. Then you go out on the road to play the Cleveland Indians and all of a sudden the offense of the Toronto Blue Jays started to click before coming back here at the uh, end of the month the beginning of August. He had Washington again another double digit scoring total for 10 runs in their game today against Cincinnati they are crushing the baseball. Well, you see the Angels taking the field wearing the uh, pearly white home uniforms. We'll take a look at Kevin Cash's lineup for the uh, surging Tampa Bay Rays. They come into play today second in the American League East. Two and a half games back of the Boston Red Sox and got themselves a 49 and 43 record and uh, pretty much the same lineup. The only change here is that Miller will serve as the DH. Chris Dickerson, Corey Dickerson, pardon me, will be out in left field as opposed to DH in the first two games of the series. Gooby, who's your guy here in this lineup that the Angels have to watch out for? Well, I think when you look at this lineup for the Tampa Bay Rays, Evan Lagori with 13 home runs. You saw him as he's swinging the bat well. He looks out over the plate, looks for that cut fastball, hits that one well, and Parker Bridwell throws a cutter. So it's going to be very important to use that changeup and use that curveball today against Longoria. Parker Bridwell, we mentioned, called up before the game. This will be his seventh appearance, sixth start of the season for the Angels. Three and one with a 3.24 ERA. He's got 33 plus innings, 37 hits allowed, 19 strikeouts. Guy that works very quickly. And if he's got things working, can keep hitters off balance for the most part. Yeah, and he does have this fastball, two seam, four seam fastball. I mentioned his cut fastball, and he also has that slider, but his changeup, that fade changeup he has, should be a very important pitch for him, especially against the left handed batters in the lineup today for the Rays. Defensively for the Angels this afternoon, you've got Cameron Maben out of left field, Mike Trout at center, Cole Calhoun in right. The infield, Yunel Escobar and Angelton Simmons on the left side. Nick Franklin and Luis Valbuena on the right. It's Martin Maldonado once again behind the plate, even after a night game last night. And we talked about, you know, the offense have been struggling the last 14, but that's not been the case for the defense. Last 22 games is three errors made. That's a 996 fielding percentage, which leads the majors in that category during that stretch. The defense has been solid, keeping the Angels in games, giving them opportunities to win. Now it's up to the offense to get that clutch hit with the runner in scoring position. Thanks. Malik Smith ready to lead things off for the Rays. Speedy center fielder patrolling that for uh, the injured Kevin Kiermeyer. 320 average. First one from Parker. Butted. Foul on the third base side. No balls and a strike. 83 degrees at first pitch. Smith will uh, take his sweet time, walk it back down. For being as fast as he is as a runner, he's one of the slowest walkers. Saving back to uh, home plate. Saving energy. Now we're ready for the second pitch of the game. One ball, one strike. Four doubles, two triples, a home run, five RBIs. 392 on base percentage for Smith. One hit last night going one for five. Tampa Bay ended up with a total of 14 hits in their 6 3 victory. One or two. A good curveball, good breaking ball from Bridwell. Fields is positioned very well himself, so with Smith at the plate throughout this game, Bridwell moves around the pitcher's mound very well to be able to field his position. Two balls, two strikes. Bouncer and this one goes foul. The gal remains at two and two. Parker's uh, pitching in that spot, vacated by the injured Matt Shoemaker. He's done a nice job at filling in. Now the Angels picked up via trade with the Baltimore Orioles earlier this year. Kind of like what he brings to the table. Another 2 2. Break the ball. That's cued toward Franklin. First batter of the game retired. One out. Here comes Dickerson. 
Talk about a slow breaking ball there again against Smith. Yeah, I think what we've seen against Smith in this series, though, he has a tough time staying back on slow breaking balls or even change-ups. Quick on a, a fastball, even a cut fastball or a hard slider. Out in front. Time to roll that one over. Ground ball, keep him off the base is very important, especially with Dickerson coming up. And now, well, he has hit the ball, especially extra base capabilities. 46 of them this season for Dickerson. Dickerson had a four hit game last night. Two singles, two doubles, four for five overall. Also stole a base, scored a run. The All Stars average at 315 now, 17 jacks, 42 runs batted in. Oh, the sky one. That's almost impossible. That's going to get on the roof. Yep. That's impressive. Over the light standard and onto the roof on the first base side. From a left-handed batter, that's that's almost impossible to pull. That's a little Led Zeppelin over the hills and far away. <laughs> One and two. That angle right there, that's a great launch angle, by the way. You think? Yeah. That's incredible. One ball, two strikes. Two. Drop that backdoor breaking pitch. Franklin out of shallow right with the shift on Simmons toward the middle. You remember back in the first game in Alaska, even Bud Norris, after getting him look for all speed, painted a fastball away against him, a firm fastball, lower part of the strike zone away. Kind of like that. Simmons is there. Two you, down. You got to remember those things. Even though his batting average is solid on hitting the ball the other way opposite field hits and outside pitches it's still when you get him to look off speed it's very difficult as a hitter to be able to react and hit a good fastball away and hit it hard two outs nobody on and Evan like Gore at the plate Hacking at that first pitch. His team will do that often. They are aggressive. They will strike out. They will hit home runs. And he will score runs in bunches. Go with two. Evan comes in batting 261. One for four last night with a sacrifice fly. Picked up his 55th run batted in. One or two. Halos retired the sign in order just once against the Rays last night. Ridwell trying to do that here in the first inning. One, two. Fouled off into the upper deck. So far in the sequence, there's been one pitch, that one high fastball. Other than that, it's been pitches in the lower part of the strike zone against Longoria. Might see him try to sneak a fastball in on him now, especially with the thought process as a hitter. You're trying to protect the outer part of the plate. Towards center field, and he's not going to get that one, two, three first inning. Longoria is on board with a two out single. Again, you can see what he's trying to do. He's looking out over the plate and hit that ball right back up the middle. Pretty good coverage on a pitch. Cut fastball away. Lines it right back up the middle for Evan Longoria. He's got that foot down. Good smooth swing to try to use that big part of the field. Nine-game hitting streak for Longoria now. Morrison at the plate. He homered last night, 25th of the year. 59 runs batted in. Oh 
seen it throughout the series seen it in this first inning they were up there swinging at that first pitch. So it's got to be a quality not one of those get over breaking balls or fastballs middle part of the plate against them. See that first pitch swings 35.4 percent. That's the highest in the majors. Again, when you look at the run totals, though, for the Rays this season, though, they are up there. They scored 436 runs this season. A lot of their home runs, too, also jumping on the first pitch. Comparatively speaking, the Angels have scored 381 runs, 13th in the American League. We've known that for a while that the offense has had its issues and just somehow found ways to uh, pick up some wins first couple of months of the season battling back one two reason why like you showed earlier the defense has been solid bullpen has been great so you win those games late all of a sudden a quick inning and a low pitch count starting to Climb a little bit for Parker Bridwell. 21 pitches so far, two outs. Gave up the single to Longoria. And now a 2 2 count on Morrison. And down goes Morrison. Pulls the uh, shoot a little bit late. He'll go down swinging for the first strikeout for Bridwell. We'll head to the bottom of the first inning. Chris Archer can't wait to get out there. We're scoreless. So it's just line up for game number 95 of the season. Halos four games under 500 at 45 and 49. It'll be made with Calhoun to Trout. In the top third of the order, Pujols, Escobar, Simmons in the middle third, Valbuena, Maldonado, and then Nick Franklin taking over at second base. He is batting ninth. Cameron Maben has struggled, Gooby, in the uh, month of July, and he's struggled mightily. And they need him to kind of get back to what he was doing in June. Well, when you, when you think about it, when this team has played well, Cameron Maben has been on base and swinging the bat well. Look at the batting average in wins, 320 batting average, but in the losses, 143. How important it is for Cameron Maben to get on base and the steal bases go first to third, put a lot of pressure on a pitcher. 28 year old right hander, native of Clayton, North Carolina. Chris Archer's on the mound, a two time All Star, including this season. Making his 20th start of the season, 7 and 5 at a 3.95 ERA. And my go to is to be successful against Archer's. Avoid those slider counts. He throws quite a few and throw off his timing. He's a guy that gets into a rhythm. You have to try to get him off balance as much as possible, get him out of his game. When he gets on a roll, difficult to hit. First pitch fastball right down Broadway, and it's an 0 1 count on Cam. Hit the ball hard a couple of times last night. Nothing to show for it, going 0 for 4. 1 1. Halos have scored four runs in the first two games of the series, all four home runs due to the home run. Pool set a solo shot. 
two nights ago. Valbuena, two home runs last time. Chopper, kind of a defensive swing there by Mabe. A tough play for Echeverria. It's Mabe. Nice play by the Rays shortstop to retire Camp. One down. Rays defensively stack up like this. Dickerson, Smith, and Susan, the outcome from left to right. Longoria, Echeverria. Beckham getting the start at second. Morrison's back at first. Sucre. Back to back starts for yeah. him by the play. To it short, Beckham has moved over to second base. That'll be his seventh start at second base. This season is committed one hurry at 68 starts. At shortstop position. So they have two talented middle infielders that cover a lot of ground for Tampa. And to it with a very good play. Quick on the transfer to get Cameron Mabin at first base. Cole had a hit last night. Double down the left field line. Ended up going one for three. Also drew a walk. Two balls, no strikes. Cole two for 12 in his career against Archer. Albert's had some pretty decent numbers. And now Escobar also with good numbers against Archer. When you look at that fastball already in this game for Archer, you wonder why he throws so many sliders and his percentage of pitches of sliders. Run that fastball 94 to 98 range on a consistent basis. Speed pitch. Yeah, that could change up he has also. His go to pitch to get a swing and miss is going to be a slider. And he will not be afraid to throw a slider even behind in counts to get back into account. Look at that percentage of sliders 45.5%. That's the highest in the majors. And he's got a good velocity on that nearly 90 miles an hour with his slider. Watch cold. And a 3 1 fastball. The Angels have a man on with one out in front of Trout. A couple of hits last night for Mike. On board three times with two singles and a walk. 339 average, 460 on base percentage. Found four for 16 in his career against Archer. First pitch swinging, fouls it off. I like that too. When you look at numbers against. Archer this season when hitters have attacked that first or second pitch and put it in play batting average are pretty solid 313 the very first pitch put in play even on an 0 1 count 341 464 on a 1 0 count when you get a little bit deeper into counts that's when he gets into that slider mode and it's very difficult to hit ball of strike Seventh start Archer's made in his career against the Angels. Good numbers against the Halos. He's five and one with a two four eight. So far through his first six career starts. Forty four strikeouts, ten walks and thirty six plus innings. This is hooked to left field a base hit. A front door slider. I, I think that was uh, his slider was meant to be on the outer part of the plate it backed up on him and trout brought his hands inside the baseball well breaking ball going straight down almost like a curveball but anything the lower part of the strike zone always gets hit hard by trout what a good piece of hitting by trouty to get that ball through the infield his fourth hit now since coming back from the disabled list so two on one out here's pujols Albert one for four last night with a single. Pools now 2,905 career hits. Mentioned Pools with good numbers against Archer. Five for 12, 417 batting average. 
Angels still looking for their first hit of the series with a man at scoring position. Cole at second, John at first. Halo so far in the series, 0 for 11. And a lot of times when you think as a hitter, you're sitting on a fastball 1 0 count. Archer will throw about half pitches on these counts with fastball, but also the other half with that slider he throws. And there it was. With the upper part of the strike zone, not called the strike though. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, called the balls and strikes today. Tony Randazzo at first, Rob Drake at second, Pat Holberg at third. Three infielders on the left side. 2 0 pitch. Boy, Corey Dickerson is almost playing in the bullpen. He is way out there. Playing extremely deep base hit, easily scores. Cole Calhoun in front of Dickerson and left. Might just feel a little bit more comfortable coming in on a ball as opposed to going back on it. <laughs> I'm guessing you don't have to go too far back if he does. Two and two. Got a fastball up. Two balls, two strikes. Cole worked the walk. Trout with the base hit the left. There was a slider on these counts, a right handed bat about two thirds of the time. There it is. Two outs. My Hyundai key for this game today for the Eagles to be successful going back to that theme we talked about in the opening. The little Beastie Boys make some noise, especially with runners in scoring position so far. Archer got Albert Pools on a swing and miss on that hard slider, but you know Escobar up now, but he's got great career numbers. Five for six in his career against Chris Archer for you know Escobar. Got to make some noise, score some runs early, get that lead and add on. And now it comes at batting 287. Takes a strike. And immediately glances back to Jerry Davis. Andy last night, two for four, a couple of singles, total of eight hits for the Angels last night. Two off the plate. Well, we showed that graph a little bit early on. His average velocity on his slider, 89.2 miles per hour. That slider is a sharp one. That went at 91. Oh, a little overthrown fastball there, 98. Two two count. Same count that Albert had. See if he goes back to that slider. And the good thing about you know Escobar, why he's had success against Archer is because he used that middle part of the field to not try to pull that slider. That's your best shot. Hit the ball the other way or back up the middle on a hard slider. Lays off full count. Runners to get a head start here. Simmons on deck. Both Shriners throwing over 20 pitches in the uh, first inning. Runners go. Three twos upstairs. They're loaded up for Simmons. Pretty good at bat, really, for you know Escobar was behind early. Did not chase any of those pitches out of the strike zone. Real close pitches. 
Then she works the walk. Anderton Simmons an opportunity here with the bases loaded in the first inning. Two walks issued by Archer here this first. And Simmons will come to the plate. Always the key. Even we mentioned a lot. We'll see him in Toronto. Pat Tabler, how he was successful with the bases loaded. He wasn't thinking grand slam. He was thinking of single up the middle, driving in two. That's what you have to have that approach against Archer. Unless he makes a mistake, then you turn on it. Working from the stretch. Oh, what count? Simmons this year, one for seven with the bases loaded. About a 278 batting average with men in scoring position of two outs. He's got Calhoun at third, Trout at second. Escobar at first. Scoreless here in the first. Oh, two. Archer with that hard slider. You got to keep it on after Cole Calhoun to try to get a good secondary lead. Eight wild pitches this season. Hampton Simmons 364 though with runners in scoring positions since May 15th. Tough count to do damage now. Looked like he went around. And the Angels waste another opportunity in this series. They leave him loaded. Why did the second inning with no score? Good eat. Yes. Had one of those before the game. Sorry, you weren't around. I'd have all that stuff on there. Save me any French fries or anything. I did. Norm. Oh, Norm made them. Never mind. Norm made them. Shocker. Our guy, Norm Peters. Yes. Souza, Miller, and Beckham here in the second for the Rays. Bridwell threw 22 pitches, 14 for strikes in the first, and uh, Aldonado clanked that one as he's done a couple of times already in this series. That one got to the home plate umpire, Jerry Davis. I mean, that's a full-on whiff. That, that fastball, 91 mile an hour fastball, it looked like Maldonado was anticipating maybe a cut fastball and it, and it stayed true and straight.
One ball, one strike. Steven Souza Jr., the right fielder. Batting 268, 18 home runs, 57 driven home. Homer last night, his only hit of the game. And that's a pitch again. It looked like it backed up on Bray. Well, got a lot of the plate, but didn't get the call. Setting up away. It's a strike. A lot of the strike zone, as a matter of fact. Drew Davis does not call that one a strike when you see a catcher reaching back. That, that is the worst excuse ever. This one lined out to left field. Maybe not going to get there. The one hop the fence. Cam plays it with a bare hand, fires it in. Souza's trying to go to second. Franklin applies the tag. As Souza came off the base, it appeared. Rob Drake calls him out. Kevin Cash will check at it. We see that a lot in this first two games of the series. Well, they will check pretty much everything. Sousa pointed in, but he's walking off the field. Turned on that pitch. Sousa Jr. swinging the bat well this season. Maybe quickly off the wall. Yep. Looked like he was off the base. And they're going to check it. Like I said, a lot. Tampa checks a lot. He applies a tag. He's out. Looks like he got him on the back of the leg before the foot went back foot got in there. And again, the call on the field is out. The Rays challenging the call on the field by Rob Drake, the second base umpire. The single for Souza at the very least. If they overturn it, it'll be a double. He foots off. And did he get that foot on before being tagged, though? Looks like he was tagged before the foot got back on the base, the back foot. Unless there's a magical ankle camera that you can kind of see beforehand. Here you might not be able to see the tag until after. Yeah, I think he's out. Yeah, I think no, he's out. out. Yeah. At the very least, be tough to overturn it, I would imagine. And a lot of times when you when you talk to Kevin Cash about why they challenge some plays and even ones where you think, okay, it looks like it's going to go against him. He figured, you know what, it may not have, even get a chance to use one of these calls or take a shot at it later in the game, so why not take it even in, in early parts of the game here in the second inning? One out. Susan gets credited with a single. Now field assist for Cameron Mabin on that throw. Nice they job by Franklin. To keep that tag on. Yep. Especially when you're trying to get the quick tag to begin with, and you see that, and you had to keep balance to apply the tag. You eventually get him when he foot went off the base. In case you're wondering, confirm means that the, you actually got him. Not the old call stands, not enough evidence to overturn. But go back real quick before that pitch to Souza. You the whole uh, didn't hit his location, so it's not called a strike. Umpires got to do away with that garbage. See, that's exactly what it's a strike. It's in the zone. Especially, I mean, that was well off the, the corner in. A lot of times you'll see this on our Fox tracks of baseball, just touching that line, but that was inside the line. And it's not an accuracy test for a pitcher to. For something to be called a strike, you've got a strike zone established. If it's anywhere in the strike zone, even if a catcher's got to reach back, then so be it. Miller takes a strike. Full boat. After that little bit of delay, Bridwell had the first three pitches out of the strike zone. Now back in the strike zone. Down the left field line, slicing away from Maven towards the short wall. He'll make the play. Never easy down there. Not a whole lot of room between the foul line and that short wall. That's not comfortable when you run into that wall either. Nice play by Cameron Maben. Second baseman, number one, Tim Trying to get a feel for that wall. 
but that elbow and then the rib cage area into that padding into that cement wall. Really kept his eye on the baseball well, was putting that hand out there to see exactly where the wall was going to be and keep the eye on the ball and into the glove. Nice play by Maben. Involved in two outs, the throw and then that catch. First two outs of this inning. There's Tim Beckham. Last we saw him at the trot back in late May. He was the starting shortstop, and he'll hook this one out to left field. Maven's not going to get there. That one goes foul. Again, another swing on the first pitch. Maven's going, ah, I've been pretty busy in this inning. Oh, that's not a good sign. So should Charles Nagy. Adam Nevola going out to the mound. Looked like Luis Valbuena noticed something first and was running over towards the mound. May not appear, but he is one tough Texas kid. Yes, he is. The nicest, most polite youngster you're going to meet. But when he's on the, the mound, a completely different person. Very, very competitive. One ball, one strike. Back up hitting 275. Pardon me, 274. 11 home runs, 33 runs batted in. Former number one overall selection. That was uh, back in 2008 out of Griffin High School at Griffin, Georgia. Good breaking ball so far for Bridwell. Coming off the DL today. Tough if you get a defensive minded player in Echeverria compared to a very good season that Beckham's finally have, and perhaps even a breakout season for him. Kevin Cash has got to deal with who gets the uh, the playing time. Nice couple plays by Cameron Bay, but we're scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second. With plenty of seating locations to choose from, the five-game summer plan allows for flexibility in choosing games throughout the summer. That includes a personalized hat. For more information, go to angels.com for those details. Oh, that's a good-looking hat. Yes. Very uh, a throwback, retro look. Fedora.
just imagine back in the day whenever we used to come to the ballpark dressed in coat, tie, fedoras. Yeah. But then everyone realized it's a baseball game. So we do that every shorts, flip flops. Don't we do that every day? Yeah. Yes, we do. But he's found Buena leading things off. He'll be followed by Martin Maldonado with Nick Franklin. Val Buena last night surprised a couple of people. Several actually. Struggles are continuing. He'd gone over two in his first two at bats and all of a sudden homered in the seventh. Pretty good poke out to center field. Then he came up in the ninth and against Jumbo Diaz and hit a jumbo sized home run to right. Multi homer game for Luis Valbuena. All three runs courtesy of him. And like most home run hitters when they get on that hot streak start to drive the ball. I'm winning it like that check call. I don't think Valbuena likes any check call. But more times than not he does swing. <laughs> <laughs> He's not very good at the check swing thing. One two from Archer downstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Luis hitting 188, eight home runs, 26 runs batted in. Slider was in the dirt, 3-2 count, still against left-handed batters. He still likes to go to that slider. Now Buena works the walk. Third walk already issued by Archer through an inning plus. And we talked about it as far as go tos. One thing about Chris Archer, he's very animated. He's a guy that's very competitive. He's got to take advantage when he doesn't feel that he didn't get that call. He thought that was a strike, although what we felt was out of the strike zone, that high fastball. Before he settles back in. Well, the battle takes a strike. Martin hitting 247. Base percentage of 308. Nine home runs, 26 RBIs. 0 for 4 last night. A little surprised to see him back behind the plate. But then again, I'm not. Off day tomorrow. And you still looking out of left field. You're right about Dickerson must feel very comfortable going in on the baseballs compared to going back. He is playing extremely deep in left, even with Maldonado at the plate. It is 38 walks for Archer coming into this game but three walks today has 147 strikeouts coming into the game two more so 149 on the season with 41 walks pretty good ratio strikeout the walk ratio for Chris Archer Nick Franklin on deck Valboy at first with the leadoff walk Martin goes down swinging third strikeout for Archer one out I mean, you think you can compare people in baseball to Chris Archer. Take a look at our tools of trade brought to you by Ram Trucks. Another power arm, a young power arm. Lance McCullers Jr., he can rush his fastball 95, 97. It's that wicked break of ball they throw. Very similar as far as velocity and percentages. Archer, the same thing, can run that fastball 95, 98. But it's go to that slider to get a swing and miss with Albert. 
and Anderson Simmons in this game. Very similar as far as power breaking balls for Lance McCullers Jr. and Chris Archer and their ability to get those swing and misses on those pitches. See there's a percentage of fastballs thrown by both, yet breaking balls, very high percentage, even though they do have power fastballs. They rely on the breaking ball to get their swing and misses. Franklin getting to start at second base. Be he and Cliff Pennington splitting the duties at second now that Danny Espinosa is no longer with the Angels. Danny designated for assignment to make room for Parker Bridwell before the game. Franklin two for 15 with the Angels and it's being acquired a deal to Milwaukee Brewers. Behind the count at 0 2. Fourth 0 2 count in the game for Archer. 37 pitches, 21 strikes. <laughs> so a lot of room on that left side of the infield for Nick Franklin, especially when you have a power arm like. Archer has so you're going to be late on occasion on the fastball same thing with that hard power slider you can still slap that ball the other way. Franklin shooting one toward the left field corner Dickerson drifting back and near the wall will make the catch. And that's why he plays deep. And generally you can tell that when you see an outfit when they play deep they're much more comfortable going in on the baseball. It's fair to going back. Yeah, Ralph getting trying to get to that warning track get a feel for the wall. He's able to run that one down just in front of the short wall in left field hit well by Franklin the other way. So two outs, a leadoff walk, still standing at first base. It's the top of the order. Cameron Maybud now up. Cam's hitless in the series. Grounded out his first time up. One of those at bats now, if you're Cameron Maven, you're thinking terms, I got to get on base anyway, I can. Certainly not swinging 3 0, maybe even 3 1, make sure it's a perfect pitch. And yeah, don't expand the strike zone. You get a fastball there, yes, you let it go, but don't chase one of those breaking balls that could be borderline pitches. You want to give Cole an opportunity with two on. Full count. Now Boyne is going to take off. Three, two. Maven goes down looking fourth strike out of the afternoon for Chris Archer. We're headed to the third inning with no score.
Homes for our troops, building mortgage-free, specially adapted homes nationwide for severely injured post-9-11 veterans. Learn more about how you can help out Homes for our troops and how it's rebuilding lives by visiting foxsportsupports.com. Danny Echevarria swinging first pitch to start the third, gets a fastball and rips it into center field. The leadoff man is on board for the Rays. Well, just like that graphic we showed earlier, they swing at the first pitch often. Yes, they hit the ball pretty well on that very first pitch throughout this series. Jesus Sucre coming up. Second consecutive start for him. Two for four game last night. Ended up having two singles, two RBIs. Sucre hitting 255, four doubles, four home runs, 23 runs batted in on the season. Well, so far in this game, has faced nine batters seven times. He's thrown a first pitch strike. We've seen a number of the hitters for the Rays swinging, making contact on that very first pitch. Good off speed pitch. One of two. Good lead for Etcheverry at first base. Sucre chases the breaking ball. One down. Third strike count for Parker. Mm -hmm. yeah, Parker Brewell has really had a good feel for his breaking ball. Talk about how well he pitches at his pace. A sharp breaking ball right there off the plate. Gets on top of that breaking ball. Snaps that slider going down and away. Swing and miss. Key to get hitters to swing at that pitch is you have to establish the fact that you can throw that fastball away on the lower part of the strike zone. Then you expand it with that hard slider off the plate. Malik Smith swinging through the first breaking ball. Grounded out his first time up. Lead off the game. Bridwell originally ninth round selection by Baltimore in 2010. Two big league games under his belt. Come to the Angels. One and one at home this season for Bridwell. 4.60. He's played and pitched very well on the road in some tough environments. Yankee Stadium, Fenway Park, Target Field. Ground ball, danger zone right there. Those are the ones who would upset you as a pitcher. You make a good pitch, and it's right down the line from the left-handed batter right down the third baseline. Luckily, that went foul.
Lead off single for Echeverria. Still at first. This one hit toward short. Short hop. Nice play by Simmons. They're going to turn two. No. <laughs> Even though he was slow to start, still is able to get there easily. Let's talk about turning on the afterburners to get down the line to avoid a double play. He's on board on the fielder's choice. Two outs now. That's a tough little hop, too. Quickly turns it. Smith is too quick going down the line. A little hesitation then. You see those turn on that afterburner. Now a threat to steal a base, 12 stolen base, but caught four times. Bridwell has not allowed a stolen base against him this season. He's pretty quick to the plate. He's about a 1.2 to the plate. Dickerson grounded out his first time up and they'll check in on him. Good footwork too for Bidwell on his pickoff move. Look for a back pick. He'll also at some point in this at bat for Maldonado back at first base if Smith doesn't try to steal beforehand. It's a big lead. Quick tag, got him. And no more challenges, so you can't challenge that play. Third out of the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the third with no score. Talk about that quick, quick, quick footwork for Bridwell and a quick tag by Valbuena gets him going back to the base. Picking up his first major league pickoff. It's worthy of a Carl's Cam replay. Quick footwork and the arm angle quick also. And the tag applied by Valbuena to 10th pickoff season for Angels pitchers since the start of last season. Lead the majors in that category. That quick tag before he gets the fingers on the base. Pick them off. Big time speed at first with Smith, but been caught now on the pickoff. Two, three, and four for the Angels here in the third inning against Archer. It'll be Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols. Chris Archer, four strikeouts, three walks, one hit. The Angels had men in scoring position in the first and uh, left them loaded. Cole cuts through the first one. It's an 0-1 count. Calhoun drew a walk in the first. Pretty impressive 39 walks this season for Cole. Usually always aggressive, especially early in counts. One one. Off speed up and away. One pitch he has not had work early on, Archer, has been his changeup. He's got a pretty good one also. He's missed away twice now with his, or three times with his changeup. 86, 87, 88 mile an hour changeup. 
Cole didn't like that call. It looked like it was off the plate. And that went a little bit better. He got the call, but it was off the plate. See what this changeup is. Brought back, moved back quite a bit by Sucre, and they got that one to call that a strike. Cole not happy, understandably why. But because he hit his spot, it's a strike. <laughs> no, he didn't even hit his spot. He brought the glove back in there like that. Generally, you never get that call when you see a catcher bringing the baseball back that far. That tells you it was out of the strike zone. Otherwise, if you catch it, just leave it there. You leave that impression. That's exactly where you want to throw it. A little flare out to shallow left field with Dickerson playing deep. He still comes in and makes a sliding catch. One out. about how he's more comfortable coming in on the baseball, sliding in, playing that deep, makes a nice play on that little flare by Cole Calhoun. He made some pretty good plays to add this series defensively, especially in the outfield for the Rays. Trout one for one with a base at the left. Yesterday, Alex Cobb pitched a lot of fastballs in on Trout. 343 batting average for Trout. Four for nine with the walks is coming off the DL with that base hit. to right field. Sousa moving over. Two down. Albert struck down in the first. Lifts this one out to right. Deja vu all over again. Souza puts it away, and the Angels down in order. We head to the fourth inning with no score. Pitchers throwing the ball very well. Parker Bridwell has thrown the ball well, mixing and matching with his pitches so far today. Fastball percentage 53, break a ball 42%. He's mixed in some change ups, and that might even increase 
as the game progresses, but he's been changing speed with his curveball and slider. A good differential in the speeds of his breaking ball have been effective so far. Dickerson was at the plate when Smith got picked off to end the third, so we'll, we'll lead things off here in the fourth inning. Two, three, and four. That thumb guard ended up coming off on the swing again. We saw that quite a bit down in Tampa against Dickerson. Ball on a strike. I think you have to be as careful if you're Martin Maldonado when you're setting up in with a fastball with Bridwell against a power left handed swing it, it's missed middle part of the plate now twice. I think you're better off going with that fastball away. Decker said rips went out to center field Trout racing back is there and that ball looked like he either knuckling and hard had topspin on it had to slam on the brakes immediately makes the catch. Boy, Dickerson is so good on pitches. We always talk about Mike Trout hitting a, a low pitch. Well, Dickerson has hit a low pitch very well throughout this season. This is a pretty good break of ball working its way down towards the dirt. Still got a lot on that swing. He loads up on that back leg and in that uppercut swing, and Trout's got to get back quickly and then slam on the brakes to run down that hard shot by Corey Dickerson in center field. All one count on Longoria, but a base hit to center with two outs in the first. Victor, this team right here, the Tampa Bay Rays, reminds me of the Twins in the late 80s and early 90s as far as being very aggressive on the first pitch. And they were a good hitting ball club also. But you can use that against them. Especially if you can control your fastball and go a little bit off the plate, whether it's inside or outside, and get some quick outs with that first pitch. They've had a lot of success swinging at the first pitch and put it in play and doing damage. As a pitcher, you can use that against them to get quick outs. Down remains at 0 2. It's amazing how the, uh, we touched on it the other day about the strikeout, the walk, the the home run, those are the three things that have really been dominating baseball from an offensive standpoint. But just going back uh, even 10 years ago to talk about on base percentage, and that's what everybody was trying to mine as far as talent. Getting guys on base. Longorio goes down swinging here for the second out. And always the feeling is, you know, you're, you're going to get one good pitch in a sequence and in a bat. That might be the very first pitch, or why wouldn't you attack it? We mentioned that twin team I think with the 91 team the twins won the World Series swung at 38 percent first pitches so they, they were aggressive and successful doing so. I think if you're if you're going to build a team that is uh, on base percentage minded at least back in the day I don't know anybody really does it now but you've got to have guys in the lineup that can slug those guys in. You can't just walk or expect to. Uh, to get those guys in to score runs as Bridwell has himself a nice one, two, three, fourth inning. We'll head to the bottom of the frame, still scoreless.
2017 Subaru Impreza. Subaru is symmetrical all-wheel drive plus 28 miles per gallon. More than a car, it's a Subaru. And by Jerome's Furniture, home of Jerry's Price and Prally, the official furniture store of Angels Baseball. And by Metro Nissan, doing it right. Scarlett's here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Looks like both starters, Chris Archer, Parker Bridwell, starting to uh, settle down a little bit. Escobar will lead things off. Both starters just uh, recently retiring two, three, and four. Angels went down in order in the third. Bridwell returned the favor in the fourth. So it'll be Escobar, Simmons, and Valbuena here against Chris Archer. First pitch, lines went out the left field. That is going to fall in there in front of Dickerson. Top spin lob on the uh, day that Roger Federer wins his eighth title. Speaking of top hand lob, yeah. What a tremendous tennis player he has been for a long, long time. Speaking of good swings, you know, Escobar jumping on that first pitch. Now six for seven in his career versus Chris Archer. Lines that in the left field for an RBI single. Second time that Escobar has been on board. The second time today that the Angels have had their leadoff man reach. Valbuena did it via the walk of the second, but he was stranded at first base. Andrew 10 0 for 1. He punched out his first time up. And you're seeing both clubs now. We know Tampa is aggressive on the first pitch. The Angels, the same thing against Archer. He's thrown quite a bit, few first pitch fastballs. Talked about the average against him. First and second pitches put in play. And Simmons with real good numbers in the last 15 games versus the Rays, aggressive on the first pitch. The ball is two strikes. Breaks his bat, loops one over the head of Alfredo Griffin. In the fourth inning now, 5-0-2 counts for Chris Archer. He's faced 15 batters, 12 first pitch strikes. Simmons chopping it to the left side. Off the glove of Longoria, it trickles out the left field. Escobar's going to stop right there. Simmons took a big turn, has to hustle back to first. It, it almost seemed Simmons thought that Escobar was going to try to advance. Thankfully, it was time called. Otherwise, Escobar would have been tagged out at second there. But off the glove, Longoria trying to get to that baseball by Anderson Simmons. Nice piece of, hit, piece of hitting there by Simmons is putting it in play. And a big turn for Escobar. And Anderson Simmons thought that he might be going, and then he had to hustle back to make sure he wasn't thrown out at first base. So back-to-back -back singles here now. Valbuena with a walk in the second. Angels with runners at first and second. Nobody out.
61 pitches for Archer 37 of it strikes he's punched out four walk three one and two Sucre with three back pits this season Two of the best in the game as far as the back picks between Maldonado and Sucre. Maldonado with two, Sucre with three. <laughs> Flips this one over to third base. Longoria. Two outs. Escobar ends up at third. The Angels now 0 for 14 in the series with men in scoring position. With the defensive shift that the Rays have on, doesn't you don't see this too often? A five-six-three double play turn on that ground ball by Luis Valbuena. Martin Maldonado strikeout victim in the second inning. Escobar standing at third. First pitch time was called. No pitch. Maldonado verbally calling for the timeout. Jerry Davis grants it. Both teams now with three hits. Fell back off the mask. One ball, two strikes. Angels opening up this fourth inning with back to back singles, but Valbuena with a double play ball. Puts a man at third with two down. Mentioned when you're going for that strikeout, Archer likes to throw that hard power slider. So you got to be ready if you're Escobar at third base if it gets away from Sucre at all at the plate. And the Angels will leave a man in scoring position. We're headed to the fifth inning with no score.
Now it's time for the Quarters Banquet Timeless Moment back on this date. 1941, Joe, Joe DiMaggio. Hit machine, Hetty. Base hit, extend his hitting streak to 56 game. It ended the next day, and then went on another streak of 16 straight for Joe DiMaggio, the Yankee Clipper. 56 game hit streak still stands to this day. It looks like one of those unbreakable marks in baseball history. I bet you're gonna sing the song. <laughs> Come on. Come a few bars, if you will. Scoreless as we start the fifth here in the uh, final game of this three game set. Halos two and four against the Rays this year after splitting the four game series in Tampa. Lost the first two here this weekend. Bridwell coming off a one, two, three, fourth inning. We get Susan Miller and Beckham here in the uh, Rays half of the fifth inning. Four strikeouts, no walks from Parker. 55th pitch in the afternoon. Got better as far as the pitch count per inning. 22 in the first, 14 in the second, 10 in the third. He threw eight last inning. He was off the end of the bat towards center. Well, he's got some carry to him. That's how strong Sousa is. One out. The one out for Brad Miller, DHing. Had to start at second base in the first two games of the series. 0 for 1, hit a fly ball to left his first time up. Very impressed by both pitchers today, how quick they get their sign and try to attack the strike zone. Jerry Davis rings him up, didn't even need help. 0 oh, 2. Down well, goes Miller. I really like what Martin Maldonado did. He saw that swing, the pitch before, went right went back to that exact same pitch. A power fastball away gets a swing and miss. Talk about perfect location. Still think that's the best pitch when you're ahead 0-2 to go right back to that fastball. Hitter has to try to protect. Very difficult to make contact. Swing and miss. Back up punched out of the second. Five strikeouts now for Parker Bridwell. Three hits allowed. Back toward the middle, make that four hits allowed. Even if Franklin comes up with it, just flip it to Simmons because it's going to be an infield base hit. This one goes out to center. Back up John Board. That's your coming up. I joined the Angels Tuesday with the Nationals in town at 707. Fans in attendance receive a Trout MVP double bobblehead courtesy of the Automobile Club of Southern California. While supplies last, for more information, Go to angels.com. Another MVP will be it at that game. Bryce Harper. Washington Nationals. They could swing the bat. Made a trade today to improve their bullpen. Picking up Sean Doolittle, Ryan Matson from Oakland for some prospects. It's a big pickup though for the Nationals to be able to add into that bullpen. They've been struggling maintaining leads late. Able to get back there. Now Buena looking in at Mike Sosha. See if he was able to tag him before that hand in there. Looks like he got the hand in. Echeverria jumped on the first pitch he saw in the third inning, had a single to center. Four singles allowed 
by Parker Bridwell so far. Souza tried to stretch his single into a double with Maven's throw. Eventually got him. Susan coming off the base at second and Franklin keeping the tag on him. Down goes Echevarria. Strikeout number six for Parker Bridwell. We're headed to the bottom of the fifth inning still with no score. July 29th, Daniel Cormier and John Jones will battle it out in the co-main event while FXX has the prelims covered. But number three, Ricardo Lamos facing number 15, Jason Knight in the featherweight division. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. Pacific on FXX. Also on the main card is Chris Cyborg, just you know, who just threw out the first pitch today. Pretty good pitch, too. What are you going to tell her otherwise? <laughs> no. Oh, yes. I dare you. Victor said it. I right, go right ahead. Hi, my name is Mark Guza, and I think your throw was awful. It was fantastic. <laughs> Hanging out. Yes. Got the cowboy hats on. Frank will lead things off. Scoreless tie here at the bottom of the fifth inning. Nine, one, and two for the Angels. Franklin hit one deep into the left field corner. Track down by Dickerson in the second inning. So Nick is 0 for 1. Three 0 count. Three infielders on the right side. The shift on. Well, you wonder if that swing for Franklin deep to left field forced Archer into a 2-0 breaking ball. You would think with his fastball that he has, that's a time where you're going to challenge a hitter, utilize the big part of the field. Cameron Mabin's on deck. And there's a walk to start the fifth inning. Fourth issued by Archer. This might be one of those times now you try to manufacture a run, whether you put a hit and run on or you bunt. Especially Archer a little upset. He thought that pitch was in the strike zone. It looked like it was in the strike zone, did not call the strike. Four walks in the game for Archer. Mentioned only 38 coming into the game with 123 innings pitched. Maybe at 0 for 2, 0 for 10 of the series. Ground ball to short and strikeout looking. 
one oh count. Long look for maybe down with Ron Renicky. Well, while Archer has uh, four strike counts and hasn't walked a whole lot of guys, I mean, it's not like it's a glaring number. This season high is six. It's Cleveland. It also has a five walk game as well. Big lead over at first base for Franklin. Two and out. Seventy four pitches, forty three for strikes for Archer. Again, maybe the little carryover from that pitch to Franklin that he thought was a strike. He had to walk around that pitching mound. Now 3 0 count to Cameron Mabin. Fastball here now if you're Maven. You can do some damage, maybe some motion. And then it's back to back walks to open up the fifth. So the second consecutive inning in which the first two batters have reached to start the frame. And now Calhoun coming up. And this copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of the Los Angeles Angels. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. You know, we talked a little bit about the Twins back in the 90s. Remember in the Metrodome when they had a walk, they would have that little ghost going there. Walks will haunt. Well, a couple walks here to start the inning. Now you got the two, three, and four hitters up for the Angels, an opportunity to score some runs, take advantage of those walks. No smoking in the Metrodome. Absolutely none. Franklin at second, Mabin at first. Cole today, a walk and a fly ball to left. Eight base runners on board against Archer. This is the fifth inning. Still have not been able to score a run as of yet. What a what? Well, like we talked about in the opening, during the stretch last 14 games with that batting average with runners in scoring position. So important as a hitter this is to shorten up, use that big part of the field. It's eight for the last 81. Under 100 batting average now with runners in scoring position. That can all change here with a base hit by Cole Calhoun. One or two. Cole sides with the, the last two or three series, including this one, which they've lost all three series. Trout on deck. Here's the one two pitch. And did he hold up? He did. Well, that wasn't easy to do so when that fastball 96 running away. Okay, the oohs and ahs, the yeah. size of relief here. See how close that was. Oh, that yes, he did. Easily could have called him out. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. I was going to say that's very difficult. When you're trying to catch up to 96 yeah. and you've committed to a swing, to stop that swing without crossing the plate, very difficult and did not do so. Two two. And Cole will go down swinging one out. Strikeout number six for Archer. And here comes Trout. Mike 
Smith a single in the first inning, a fly ball to right in the third. First pitch. Slider in there. That's that first pitch get over slider that Archer will throw. And if Trout can hit very well to right center field. That was a the height for him to do damage on that slider away. Back-to-back -back walks to open up this fifth inning. Franklin at second, Maven at first. One one. And tight. That fastball had some movement inside. That would have been a difficult one if you committed to swinging that, getting the barrel of the bat on that 96. I think if you're trout, you're sitting breaking ball here. Eighty five pitches for the right hander. Got the breaking ball. Two two. To two now. Trout goes down swinging on a fastball. Two down. Back to back strikeouts after walking the first two batters. Here comes Albert. And the sequence pitch by pitch against Trout by Chris Archer starts him off with that slider to get it in that strike zone. Followed up another slider well off the outside corner. Fastball runs in off the inside corner that, that slider right back to that outside part very similar to the first pitch and then he challenged him with 97 upper part of the strike zone to get a swing and miss. Albert struck out in the first to fly ball to right in the third. Fastball for strike. Pujols missed out on an opportunity in the first inning to uh, get the Angels on the board. Eventually struck out. Chance to get the Angels on the board here in the fifth. Scoreless, two outs, two on. Good numbers career wise for Albert against Archer. No balls, two strikes. I think on the follow through, Archer stumbled a little bit to try to do that power slider. Another 0 2 count for Archer in this game. Sixth time, although he does have some walks in this game, but he's been ahead of the count. He's been very effective. Oh, 2 downstairs. One ball, two strikes. Fastball located away and down. Pretty much means a setup for a slider going in that plane. A little bit off the outside corner. Albert, little flare out to right field, and that'll get down for a hit. Franklin's being waved off. Here comes a throw from Souza, a good one, and Franklin is safe. Jerry Davis has already made the call safe. They're asking 
pursuit great to tag Franklin. Kevin Cash is, but Davis made the call safe. And there's no challenge. There's left. no challenge left for the uh, the Rays. Clutch, One nothing. Clutch base hit for Albert, especially behind in the count. Really good throw by Steven Souza Jr. And we've seen that throw on display. He charged that well, got himself in the very good throwing position, and you have to send him home. And Ron Renicky sends Franklin home. Hey, got it. Went around the tag. Looked like he got the plate, Gooby. Very that back corner of the plate. Tell you what, not a lot of room, not a lot of path to be able to get to that plate anyhow if you're no. Nick Franklin. Now, if the umpire, his uh, estimation, didn't see a tag, nor saw a runner touch home plate, he would make no call whatsoever. Exactly. And the play would be live, and that would uh, be why Cash was trying to get Sucre's attention, but Davis immediately made the safe call, signifying that the hand touched in. There was no tag. So Albert picks up the RBI, one nothing Angels here in the fifth. And finally that base hit with a runner in scoring position in this series. He snaps an 0 for 17. Albert's career RBI, number 1,873. Escobar fouling it off. No balls, two strikes. Maven ended up taking third base on that single. And throw home. There he is on the all-time list. Albert's on the move. Check swing. He went around. That was all just to try to get to roll that throw to second. Escobar down for the third out. The Angels get on the board. It's one nothing as we head to the top of the sixth inning. Of the sixth in that last inning, Albert Pools is our top tier play brought to you by Arco on a slider from Chris Archer. Goes inside out approach and lines it in the right field. Sousa with a good throw, but an excellent slide by Nick Franklin to get that back part of the plate to score the only run of the game. Mike Trout liking that slide in RBI. 9 1 and 2 for the Rays. Jesus Sucre leading things off. He'll take a strike. Parker Bridwell, six punch outs, no walks. Sucre, one of those strikeouts, and that was back in the third. 
Oh, a real good feel for his breaking ball today. One, two. Oh, cue toward first. Val Buena there gives it to Bridwell. One down. And another good pitch by Bridwell. Off balance swing for a hitter against him. There's the top of the order to Malik Smith. He's 0 for 2. Smith reached on a fielder's choice in the third inning, but then Bridwell picked him off first. Big league pickoff for Parker. Bridwell off the mound's got him. Imagine how well he feels his position. Two down. Well, you see how quickly he gets off, gets in the good fielding position, athletic position to field that like an infielder. Once you release the baseball, you become the fifth infielder. Well done by Parker Bridwell. Bridwell, the Angels have a young, controllable starting pitcher. Orioles, over the last couple of years, have tried to convert him to a bullpen piece. Matter of fact, his two big league games last year were both out of the pen. His first major league start was here. Picked up the win. He's a member of the Angels. It'll be 26 here in early August. Hoy Dickerson, the left fielder, is 0 for 2. He's grounded out and hit a fly ball to center. Great location, that little sinker. For Bridwell. One, one. Next offering will be his 75th of the ball game. Foul back. The Astros keep on rolling. They've defeated the Minnesota Twins today, five to three. Houston now 62 and 30 to take the series against the Twins. Texas and the Royals in the ninth. Tied at three. Down goes Dickerson. Parker Bridwell with a 1 2 3 shut down inning. Go ahead to the bottom of the sixth inning. Angels up 1 nothing.
back and better than ever. Watch every out-of-market regular season game live on over 400 supported devices. Plus, get a free subscription to At-Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Just go to MLB.tv for details. One nothing Angels. Mark Bridwell, stellar through six innings, 75 pitches, six strikeouts. Pardon me, seven strikeouts, no walks. He has been very impressive. Now we don't make the decisions clearly. But from what I've seen, Parker Bridwell now seventh game, seventh start, sixth start. This Simmons pulls this one toward the corner. Dickerson into a slide. Anderson trying to go for a double. He is in there standing up. I uh would be hard pressed to take Parker Bridwell out of the rotation. He's part of that rotation right now for sure. Simba picks up his 23rd double, his second hit of the ball game. Already more doubles this season than he had the entire season last year. Fastball, letter high, turns on it. Again, aggressive first pitch against Archer. Lines it down in that corner in scoring position. 23rd double, like you mentioned, Victor. And he's right out of that batter's box. He's thinking double. Alfredo Griffin waving him to second base, forcing a perfect throw. No throw there to second in scoring position now. An opportunity to be able to manufacture a run. See those double total. More, one more than last year. Now Buena, a walk and a double play ball. He's 0 for 1. Sky to right. Souza is over near the foul line. Simmons back to the base to tag. He's going to third. He'll get in there. Good job. Out. Good productive out by Valbuena. Nice job by Emerson Simmons, too, knowing that Souza, even with his arm, he has, and you've got to go towards that line. A very long throw from right field. Gets right back to the base, tags up. One like would force that infield in now for the Tampa Bay Rays. Good base running by Anderson Simmons. Nice job by Valbuena. Rosmo Romero is getting ready for the Rays. Archer's at 97 pitches so far. Field in for the Rays. Martin Maldonado twice has struck out. But Archer's got it. Simmons comes home and safe at the plate. Sucre applied the tag, but kind of in a nonchalant manner. Archer can't believe it, buries his head in the grass. Kevin Cash will come out to argue, but he has no challenges. And that's all you can do as a manager to go out and get an explanation why he did indeed call him safe. Looked like he was going to be out by quite a bit. The low throw on the flip. A little bounce. See if that foot got in there. I'll tell you what, it looked like he did yeah. get in there. That's a heck of a call. By right, Jerry Davis, a lot of times when a throw beats a runner, you're going to call him out. I mean, it didn't seem like there was a sense of urgency by Sucre to quickly tag or get the glove into that spot. Let's see if this is a little better look. See that yeah. first? Yeah, he got sure that's did. a great call. That's a sacrifice. Picks up the RBI, and it's two nothing. Talk about a gift run on that one. Nick Franklin walked and scored his last time up. 0 for 1 on the day. If Franklin gets on board, might be the last bat of the game for Chris Archer. Again, he got to that baseball quickly. 
the low throw, but still. Sucre looked like he had a chance to apply a tag, but did not do so. Lifted out towards center. Smith is there. Two down. Two outs and a man at first base. Cameron Maven 0 for 2 with a walk. Keep in mind, Kevin Cash used his uh, challenge on the pickoff. Oh, was it the pickoff? No, the play at second base when Steven Souza yes. early on tried to stretch a single into a double. That was in the second inning. Again, we talked about how he will use that challenge even early on where they feel. You don't get many opportunities later in the game. Well, he's had a couple opportunities, even though he would have lost both challenges there also at the plate. Let it intimidate you. Come on, man. Two balls, no strikes. The mayor is ready to go. Calhoun on deck. It's a walking baby here. He's done. I think. Issued five walks today. Maybe swinging three and zero oh, fouls it off. I'll go back to my Hyundai key for this game. Talked about the offense needing to make some noise. Not a lot, but just enough so far in this game. But still an opportunity for Cameron to get on base and let Cole Calhoun with a, come up with a couple runners on. Team Maldonado to get a jump here. 3 2. Maven strikes out swinging, and the uh, inning comes to an end. The Angels do add a run on the safety squeeze ahead of the seventh. Halo's up 2 nothing.
Angels baseball on Fox Sports West is being brought to you by Hyundai. There's no better time to buy a new Hyundai than now. See your local Hyundai dealer or visit buyhyundai.com. Handles up to nothing. Well pitched game on both sides. A little archer uh, command wise not as sharp as we've seen him before but he was able to work around a couple of issues. But he's still down to nothing to Parker Bridwell who's been uh, just uh, that much better. Seven strikeouts no walks. Four singles allowed through six innings and here in the seventh he gets Longoria Morrison and Susan good he's only thrown 75 pitches and he's really commanded all his pitches very very well changes speed with his breaking ball. His fastball command with good movement lower part of the strike zone. Evan Longoria with a single of the first a strikeout in the fourth. One. Good spot challenge with a fastball and a 2 0 count, but he hit the outside part of the plate. This is pulled left. It's a leadoff single for Longoria. It's five hits in a game for the Rays. Longoria with two of them. Third time this uh, ball game that the leadoff man has reached. First time since the third inning. <laughs> Look at Morrison, a strike down, a ground ball to first. So now twice in this inning has fallen behind in a count. Longoria fell behind 2-0, 1-0 to Morrison here. One thing you have to remember as a pitcher in these situations when you're throwing the ball well, you don't look ahead, you don't think in terms of that eighth and ninth inning, you think about the seventh inning each batter, especially this part of the order for the Rays. Two oh. And that is out to deep right field, and we're tied at two. Logan Morrison unloads on a Parker Bridwell pitch. It's his 26th of the season. And that was 61 RBIs. It's a 2 2 tie. And like we said so often with this Rays team, they rely on the long ball to score runs when they get two with one swing in the bat with Logan Morrison's 26 already a career high. As far as home runs. Challenge that fastball stayed hard to the plate and Marson did not miss it. Really the first time in this game in which Bridwell has come out and fallen behind a back to back hitters both picking up hits. Single by Longoria, the home run now by Morrison. Baseball went a long, long way for Morrison. Strong hitter. Oh, what count on Souza, who's one for two. <laughs> 
at 12 straight innings without giving up a run for Bridwell for that two run home run. Sousa one for two. Two two. This will foul off into the seats. Blake Parker ready to go in the pen for Mike Sosha if necessary. Now the 2 2. Full count. Breaking ball gets Souza one out. Brad Miller, the DH, is over two. Fly ball to left and a strikeout. 2 2 game here in the seventh. Morris is tying it up. What about? Good slow breaking ball in the outside corner for Bridwell. Change up, tried one there on a 2 1 count. Full count. Late swing on that fastball after the change out the pitch before. Backups on deck. There's payoff pitch. And Miller works the walk. That's the first walk issued by Bridwell. Because Mike Sosha, we're going to get ourselves a pitching change. Parker Bridwell, exceptional through six plus innings. Gave up the back to back hits to start the seventh, the single, followed by the home run. And after striking out, Sousa walks Miller, so he is done. After six and a third, he'll get a nice round of applause. He departs the 2 2 game or the seventh. Blake Parker taking over.
Angels Baseball on Fox Sports West is being brought to you by the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica, the new benchmark of minivans. Test drive one at your local Chrysler dealership today. By Mercury Insurance, we're on a mission to save you money. Log on to MercuryInsurance.com to get a fast, free quote and see how much you can save. And by Buick. Down to two here in the seventh inning. A uh, two-run home run by Logan Morris is tying this game up. Parker Bridwell is done after six and a third. Six hits, a career high, eight strikeouts, and one walk. He'll depart with a man at first base. That's his responsibility. That's Brad Miller. It's to Beckable stroll to the plate to face Blake Parker. Parker pitching his 44th game. Three and two mark at a 2 5 2 ERA. Back up so far this afternoon. One for two. A strikeout in the second, singled in the fifth. Miller with four stolen bases. He's been caught once. Four stolen bases for Miller. He's been caught once. One ball with strike. Rays with two runs on six hits. They've left two on. Halos with two runs, five hits, have stranded eight. Morris put himself in a very favorable fastball count. He got a fastball and he did not miss it. Two. Echeverria is on deck. This top of the seventh really just uh, brought this game to an absolute halt. On the move is Miller. Pitches down low. Throw. Perfect. Two down. Another great throw from Maldonado. Coming in the game has thrown out 39% of base runners. What a perfect throw to get Miller at second base. Talk about that pop time, that quick release and perfect throw. Quick tag, gets him easily at second base. What a throw from Maldonado. Even with all these games played and started, still perfect throw behind the plate. And down it goes, back of the inning comes to an end, but Logan Morrison ties it up with one swing of the bat. 
Still a good outing for Parker Bridwell. We're tied at two. Of the seventh, now it's time for the T-Mobile Unlimited Baseball Break. Colorado finally picks up a W now for this 5-15 and 15 with a big win today. Beating the Mets 13-4. to Mayhew with a big one, 4-6, for six, including two doubles, three runs scored. Nelson Cruz a home run in the 10th as Seattle wins again. They beat the White Sox 7-6 to six in 10 innings. And now let's take a look at our showstopper around the majors. The big trade for the Chicago Cubs. Jose Quintana playing solid against Baltimore today. Seven shutout innings, 12 punch outs in his debut as a Chicago Cub. Good changeup work in that fastball command, but 12 punches in the game for Quintana as they win the game. He's nothing against Baltimore. The Cubs are starting to play better baseball. Pitching change for the Rays here in the bottom of the seventh of a 2 2 game. Tommy Hunter takes over as the Angels will have 2 3 and 4 coming up. Second appearance of the series for uh, Hunter. Tommy has uh, been uh, stellar for them this year. 2.03 ERA. And Hunter's got that power fastball out of the bullpen. We'll rush at 93 to even touch 100 miles an hour. Curveball, changeup. Calhoun trying to pull for the Angels here in the bottom of the seventh. Chris Archer, by the way, instead of going six innings, gave up two runs, both earned on five hits, nine strikeouts, five walks. Parker Bridwell and his start for the Angels ended up going six and a third, six hits, including the home run. Career high, eight strikeouts, one walk with two runs, both earned. Cole so far with a walk, a fly ball to left, and a strikeout. Over two. Oh, 
Lift one out toward shallow left field. That's a Varia's going out, dealing with that sunshine, and it falls in there. Cole keeps on running, trying to get the second, and he is out. No real reason to try to get there unless you know you can, especially with Trout coming up. So it'll go as a single, and then a put out at second. Especially with that edge free and his arm strength, too. He went back in that baseball and it didn't get too far away from him. It gets up quickly. Great presence of mind to make a perfect throw and gets Cole at second base. Base is clear for Trout. They're going to check and see if Cole got that hand in before the tag was applied. Love is there. Tag on the stomach. Sure looked like the tag was applied before the hand got in there. There's no tag at that point. That's a matter if the right hand got in. If that right hand gets in real close before that tag was on the stomach area of Cole Calhoun. Yeah, that one there looked like the right hand close to being on the bag, but uh, headsets are coming off here. And out is the call. So one out, nobody on for Trout. Trout one for three with a single back in the first inning. Trout hitless in his career against Tommy Hunter, 0 for 7. No balls, two strikes. Don't try that power fastball upper part of the strike zone now here one two count See if trout can turn that one around Tommy Hunter in to face the part of the order in which uh, he's gone just one for 18 in their careers against him. Found foul tips this one into the bit. That was one for 18 before the Cole single. And now Trout goes down for round number two. Now Verpool's coming to the plate now. Now it's time for the driver's seat brought to you by the new 2017 Kia Sorrento. Albert Pools with that RBI. His last at bat back in the fifth inning. 1873. Career RBI 10th on the all time list, fourth in the majors since the start of last season with 175 RBI for Albert Pujols. One for three, an RBI single. It was back in the fifth inning. We're tied at two here in the seventh. Back 
Bouncer at the second base. Shift John Beckham. Look, the first Halos quietly here in the seventh as we head to the eighth inning. Still tied at two. Salvish the final game of this three game series with the Tampa Bay Rays and we are all tied at two heading to the top of the eighth inning. Ken French back with you. Don't forget when this one comes to an end it's all about Angels Live presented by your SoCal Mazda dealers with myself Jose Moda, Alex Curry. Of course we're going to look back at the performance by the rookie Parker Bridwell recalled from AAA pitching like an all-star going pitch for pitch with Chris Archer. You got Mike Trout pick up another hit in his return and we'll look ahead as his homestand continues on Tuesday. The Washington Nationals come to town. It's all on the post game show. But right now, back inside for the top of the eighth with Victor and Gooby, guys. Thanks a lot, Frenchie, as uh, David Hernandez takes over on the mound. Replaces uh, Blake Parker, who finished off the uh, top of the seventh inning. 33rd game for David, no record at 2.73 ERA. And he'll face Echeverria, Sucre, and Smith, 8 9 and 1 for Tampa Bay. That was another solid job by Blake Parker today. Two thirds of inning, a punch out. It's a Maria bouncing the first one foul. The shortstop had a single back in the third, struck out of the fifth. O2. Good rip at that fastball. A little bit too much of the strikes on, a, on an O2 pitch for David Hernandez on that one. O2 pitch again. Good hack again by it's for real.
you know, when you look at the sequence for Hernandez against Echeverria, a lot of pitches, middle part of the plate, especially when he got ahead of the count. See if you can get him to chase something off the plate. Slider out to left. One down. Always good to uh, retire that leadoff man, especially late the tie game. Ninth place hitter, Jesus Sucre. Catcher. 0 for 2 with a strikeout, a ground ball to first. Both teams with six hits. Rays have left two on. The Angels have stranded eight. Handles in the bottom of the eighth inning have Escobar, Simmons, and Val Boyman coming up. And a lot of strikes thrown in this inning by Hernandez. All eight pitches, strikes. The Rays have uh, Jumbo Diaz getting ready. Boxberger's pitched in the first two games of this series, so. Yeah, it's coming back from Tommy John surgery. Not this year, but he came back last year pitching five games. Can't imagine he'd go three straight. There's Jumbo. One, two. Downstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Down goes Sucre, two outs. That's the tenth strikeout for Angel pitching against the Tampa Bay Rays. Good breaking ball, that slider from David Hernandez. Malik Smith, one for 11 in the series. Hitless today. Escobar in on the grass at third. Just missed low. Texas ended up losing to Kansas City. Shinsu Chu lost a ball in the sun. The base is loaded two outs in the bottom of the ninth as the uh, Royals walked off on the Rangers. That snapped a, a 12 game. Losing streak by Kansas City to Texas. Yes, Crazy. sometimes you need a little luck and that's exactly what Kansas yeah. City got against the Rangers. Look like a routine fly ball to chew out in right field. Seattle beat Chicago. Nelson Cruz with a home run at the top of the 10th. Seattle's won four in a row. Uh, and, and with that, you see some of the teams ahead of you, including the Rays. The, the, uh, the Angels got to start picking up the pace as far as the wild card is concerned. Lost today. I think they, they dropped back to five games back. For their bounce. Making it more and more difficult. Yeah, the Yankees won game one of their doubleheader today against the Red Sox. Bouncer toward first. Hernandez is going to pick it up and apply the tag. And Alex Smith goes down. And David Hernandez with a one, two, three, eighth inning. Nice frame by Hernandez. Looks like Jumbo Diaz has kind of got a relief. We're headed to the bottom of the eighth inning. This game tied at two.
Phillies in town. Fans in attendance that night will receive a pair of Trout number 27 socks. Presented or courtesy by uh, Microsimi. Presented whatever courtesy. Microsimi is the ones that's sponsoring the event. Yes. <laughs> For more information, go to angels.com. You want me to read that over again? Uh, no, it's okay. You did real well. All right. Hey, those socks will go real well with Ken French's sport coat he wears with that angel stuff inside the sport coat for Ken French. Yeah. I think he's got uh, over 27 boxers on right now to go with that. Yes, he does. Coat. How he works. Jumbo Diaz on a relief. 31st game. Second consecutive ball game. One and three, a five, four, six CRA. He gave up the uh, two run home run to Val Buena. Yeah, fastball Last power night. one, 96 99 range. Slider, change up. Even though we power arm out of the bullpen again for the Tampa Bay Rays. Tommy Hunter out of the game. He has thrown the ball very well throughout his career against the Angels. Now out of the game, different pitcher for the Rays. Escobar, Simmons, Valbuena for the Angels here in the eighth. Judy drives one out to center field. Malik Smith drifting back. Just shot the track and put it away for the first out. Hit well by Escobar. Smith able to run that one down in center field. Simmons, a two hit game. Single with a double. Checked his swinger, did he? Yes, he did. One one breaking ball misses. Two hit game for Simmons including that double 23rd double of the season. Kept his that bat alive there in the 2-2 breaking ball.
Simmons lines on the left. Got a high fastball and turned it around. Third hit of the game. Second at bat in a row, which he's got a high pitch and still able to bring his hands up and lines it in the left field. Luis Valbuena coming to the plate, hit list tonight, but this is what he did in his plate appearance against Jumbo last night. Yeah, he got that breaking ball, and he turned on and hit it way out to right field. Two-run home run, second of the game. Oh, Kevin Cash remembers that, and he's going to go to the bullpen. We've got himself a pitching change with one out, one on here in the eighth inning of a 2-2 game. Rays decided to go back out to the pen. Day and uh, Angelton Simmons here in the eighth inning, picking up his third hit of the ball game. You got Calhoun, John Pools, Escobar also with hits in this one. And uh, looks like CJ Crone is going to come in and pinch hit for Luis Valbuena. The Rays go to their bullpen. Adam Kalarik takes over the lefty, second time he's pitched in this series. This will be his sixth appearance, no record, four to third. His big league debut on June 29th. C.J. Crone, 213 on the season. Five doubles, two home runs, 14 runs batted in as a pinch hitter. He's one for two. He's got Simmons standing at first base. He'll shoot this one out to right field toward the corner. Chasing Souza back at the wall. Gone! Big fly for C.J. Crone. And the Halos have taken the lead here in the eighth. Home run there for CJ Crone, a home run for Valbuena in that spot last night. CJ Crone pinch hitting for Valbuena goes the other way with a two home run in the high fives in the dugout. CJ Crone unties the game with that swing in the bat to right field two run home run. A two run blast after the single by Andleton Simmons and that's got to feel so good for CJ Crone. It's been a tough season for him as this one's grounded to short. Maldonado retired for the second out. Going the other way too. What a swing for CJ to go to right field. Pitch away. Looking to drive the ball. Gets it up in the air in the carry during the day. Two run home run CJ Crone. Sousa running back, runs out of room and out of the yard for C.J. Crone. Franklin bouncing this one to short. Echeverria comes in, gets rid of it quickly, and we will head to the ninth inning with the Angels now on top, 4-2. to two.
one big swing and an opportunity for Button Norris to be able to pick up the save for David Hernandez, all brought about by that swing. C.J. Crone, two-run home run, pinch hit, two-run home run for Crone. Bottom of the eighth inning stays in the game and will take over at first base. Halo's on top, four to two, trying to uh, salvage the finale of this three-game set against the Rays after dropping the first two. And it's Bud Norris on the mound for the Angels, trying to close it out. 39th game, one and two record at 2170 RA, 13 saves on the year. He's looking for his 14th, and he's been uh, pretty solid for the Angels. A little brief stint on the DL dealing with a sore knee. Yeah, his fastball has been very solid, consistent around 93, 97 range. That cut fastball good, slider very good also for Bud Norris. And a little challenge here for Bud in that uh, he gets to face two, three, and four for the race. So no easy task. You've got Dickerson, Longoria, and then Morris is coming up. Dickerson, the left fielder today, 0 for 3 with a ground down, a fly ball to center to strike out. One for seven in this career with four strikeouts for Dickerson versus Bud Norris. First pitch in for a strike. Bud pitched in Friday's game, went one inning, had one strikeout, total of nine pitches. Oh, a two. Shift on with Dickerson at the plate. And down he goes. Make that five strikeouts of his career against Norris. One down. Great location that pitch out of the strike zone. Snaps that slider down and in. Swing and miss. Longoria, two hit game. Takes down it away.
94 on that pitch from Bud. And that's a base hit toward the corner just inside the bag. Longori with a three hit game trying to go to second. Throw from Cole, a good one, and Longoria is in there. It's a double for Evan, his 24th. Cole certainly got a lot on that throw to second base. See if he went off the base in that quick tag. Looks like he stayed connected with that base all the way through the slide. I think he whiffs right here. Actually, he got him. Looks like he got him right on that arm protection. Looked like it got him. There's Logan Morrison. And he'll get a base hit to right field. Longoria had to hold up. Can only advance to third. An aggressive swing for the Tampa Bay Rays. Two on with one out. Runners at the corners. Peter Borges at first base. Pentronic for Morrison. He represents the tying run. Souza's one for three, a single, a fly ball to center to strike out. It's grounded as six double plays this year, but I imagine that Borges is going to be on the move at some point. Three stolen bases has been caught twice. This is base hit up the middle. Longoria will score three consecutive hits. And it's a 4-3 game. Tying run, now it's second. And another aggressive swing for a Rays hitter. Lines that went right back up the middle. Susan with two hits. Morrison with two in the game. Longoria with three in the game. Three, four, and five hitters for the Rays today doing the damage. So it's Brad Miller coming up. Two for eight in his career against Norris. So far today, 0 for 2 with a walk. One ball, no strikes. Borges is standing at second. Souza at first. Souza for big man's got good speed. So good speed on the bases for the Rays.
Glenn Norris wants Martin Maldonado to go through a new series of signs. One out count. Seven shading Miller toward the middle. This is fouled off one one. Late swing on that fastball. And Bud Norris this year, when you look at his splits, as far as left-handed batters versus right-handed batters, has been more effective against left-handed batters this season. 148 batting average righties, 205. Two and one. Norris striking out Dickerson to start this so ninth inning. And Longoria sneaking a double inside the first base bank. With the third on the single by Morrison. And now uh, Souza bringing home a run. So it's a one run lead with one out, two on. <laughs> Three balls and a strike. Tim Beckham's on deck. <laughs> and he walked him and they're loaded. Three straight hits and now a walk. Tying runs at second. Go ahead, or pardon me, tying run third. Go ahead, run at second base. And Beckham coming to the plate. Not easy to double up, although he has rolled into six double plays. Good speed at the plate. Back of the second baseman, one for three. He had a single back in the fifth inning. The other two times up, he has punched out. First one on the way. It's a bouncer towards short. It's going to be tough to turn two. See if they do it. They got it. Light that baby up as the Angels take the finale by the final of four to three. Tell you what, that was not easy. That's a great turn by Anderson Simmons and Nick Franklin got a lot on that relay throw. The first base talked about Beckham in his speed. Only six double plays grounded into. This is textbook. Getting rid of the baseball quickly for Anderson Simmons. Perfect feet and then a lot on that throw for Franklin to complete a six four three game ending double play well certainly uh, made it interesting in the top of the ninth inning but uh, a nice job overall to get that play nice start of the double play by Andrelton and our Land Rover above and beyond player of the game that pinch hit two run home run in the eighth broke the 2 2 tie by CJ Crone first pinch hit home run for the Angels this season a big one for CJ Crone oh no doubt about it it was a, a game of Crones if you will <laughs> a big perfect time hit, no one. doubt right yes but, indeed. Uh, it's a nice victory for the Angels considering how the first two games played out here and you've got the Washington Nationals coming up for a two game series beginning 
on Tuesday night. And hopefully you can carry that over that momentum anyway over into that series. C.J. Crone the hero today. He's down on the field with Alex Curry. C.J. this was another close one today right down to the wire. What was the difference you saw from your team this afternoon to pull out the win. I mean the pitchers did a great job. Uh, they kept us in it all day and fortunately we got a couple there late and uh, it was good enough. So that was, it was a good win. And speaking of the pitching Parker Bridwell has been an arm you guys can depend on. So Bridwell has been an arm you guys have to depend on. What kind of boost has he given this team. Uh, I mean he's working fast. He has great tempo and he's throwing strikes. Uh, it's easy to play defense behind that and he's, uh, he's throwing the ball very well and tonight was just another example of it. And something that's not easy is to come in and hit a pinch hit two run home run to solidify this game. What did you see and what did you get. Uh, just a first pitch fastball. I mean I wanted to be aggressive. I haven't had in a bat in a little bit. Um, I wanted to make it worth it. So I uh, got a good pitch to hit and thankfully it went out. Yes it did. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Well, the Angels take game three and avoid the sweep. First the Rays thanks to two run home run by CJ Crone but stick around for Angels live with Kent French and Jose Moda coming up next.